Thank you all very much. Uh, this is uh, a couple of just protocol things for those of you that this music might be new to, and we're gonna talk about this music in a little while. But you hear us play a song and then you hear each of us individually solo. At the end of each of our solos, you are highly encouraged to applaud. <laughs> uh, it's not uh, just, it's, it's not like a symphony thing where you don't dare applaud between movements of a symphony, but you'd better applaud after each of us solos or we all get individually very depressed about that, <laughs> just so you'll know. Uh, this is an evening of jazz here at Holy Cross and we've done it uh, for many, many years. And then COVID came in and it kind of threw us all for a loop as far as the concert was concerned. And last year, we did the first live concert like this. It was live, but we were all masked, and we had no audience. Other than that, it was a perfect concert. <laughs> this year is totally brand new, because not only are we maskless, but we are in a totally brand new facility with a brand new piano, with a brand new beautiful stage. And so we're adjusting to this as well as probably you are too. Uh, we're not used to having such a vast hall to do this concert in. We usually play it in Brooks and uh, it's kind of more intimate down there. So it's up to you to make us feel as if this were intimate and we start by applauding after everybody's solos. <laughs> okay, uh, jazz music is sometimes referred to as uh, America's only true art form, and I don't know if that's particularly true in this day and age, but at one point, it certainly was one of America's major art forms. Not only was it brand new to the musical world in the, at the turn of the last century, but it also became almost overnight America's most popular music from the 1920s and 30s and 40s and 50s into the 60s, jazz music was the popular music of the day. The best-selling uh, pop albums were jazz albums. The biggest names in, in pop music were jazz players, jazz names. It was a am very amazing, vital, vibrant, and most importantly, brand new music at the turn of the last century. How important was it? In the 1920s, that whole decade of the 1920s was called the Jazz Age. The, and in the, at the turn of the 19, uh, eight, not 2000, into this, into this decade, the 21st century, the American Dialectic Institute, yes, there is such a thing, pronounced the most important new word in the entire 20th century was the word jazz for this kind of music. So jazz was incredibly significant all through the 20th century. And then a horrible thing happened in the 50s. I forget what it was called. The first word was rock, and the second word was roll. roll. <laughs> rock and roll came into being in the 50s and the 60s, and jazz music was kind of pushed aside as a, a, pro, a predominant pop cultural phenomenon. It still was in existence, it still is in existence today, but it's kind of on the back burner of American musical pop culture. So, as a result, a lot of people really don't know that much about it, jazz music, and so already I've talked too much, but I'm gonna talk about one and a half minutes more just to explain what this music is and very quickly how it came to be. Um, Jazz music is an improvisational music. 
we make up most of the stuff that we play here on this spot. It's not like classical music where everything is written down. If you play a Mozart symphony, you're playing it the way he wrote it. And if you don't play it the way he wrote it, that means you're playing wrong notes. Here, we're making up our own notes, so there are no wrong notes. And how did it happen that this new music could, would come into being at the turn of the 20th century? Well, it came into being at all because of slavery. Slavery in this country for 250 years caused two very different musical cultures to kind of slam together. The musical culture of West Africa with its very complex rhythms, with its improvisation, with its different sounds, and it combined with the music of Western European music, hymns, the kind of hymns that they sang in the, in the Christian churches during the colonial era, those very famous hymns that were totally based on the major scale that we all remember from elementary school. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. That scale that you all sang at one time or other. Um, that music, the hymns, the, the, the classical music of Mozart and Beethoven, and Beethoven, they were all what we would call music based on tonal music based on that scale. These two kinds of cultures slammed together all during slavery, and at the, res the result of that was at the end of the 19th century, after emancipation, there was a whole new music going on that was a combination of African culture and Western European culture, and this new music ultimately became jazz music. There, that's almost the end of the speech. What we're going to do right now is kind of do a musical uh, metaphor of exactly what happened for 200 years on the plantations when Africans would hear these Christian hymns sung in the white Christian churches, be totally taken by the music, but wanting to adapt it to their own musical style, styles that involved improvisation, rhythmic excitement, different sounds, and these two cultures came together to create this new music. Ben and I are gonna play a hymn for you. It's called How Great Thou Art. It's a Christian hymn that was written in the late 1700s. We're gonna play it the way they, it would have been performed. It would have been sung, of course, but we're gonna play it the way it would have been performed in a Christian church in, let's say, 1802. And then we're gonna kind of morph gradually into the way it would have been performed in a black Christian church on the plantation in 1802. So this is how great thou art. Thank <laughs> you. 
Now going to introduce each of these guys to you, gentlemen, to you. Um, on piano, Mr. Ben Cook. <laughs> and on guitar, John Wilkins. <laughs> and on drums, Marty Richards. <laughs> and uh, the last person, I've saved this person for the last, his, uh, I'll get, tell you his name and then you can applaud, then I'll tell you about him. Marshall Wood on bass. Uh, Marshall uh, has had quite a great experience in the last 10 years. He has been the bass player for Tony Bennett uh, for the last 10 years on the road all over the world with Tony Bennett. Um, people of a certain age may not be as familiar with who Tony Bennett 
is as others, but uh, I just trust me, he was one of the leading record sellers in the history of popular music from the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s and the, into the 2000s. And he, in addition to that, Tony has toured with Lady Gaga and uh, Amy Winehouse and all these different more contemporary people, and Marshall has played with all of them too. So Marshall is, one more time for Marshall. We're gonna feature Marshall right now. Um, and not only that, we're gonna feature him with a, a spectacular vocalist who's one of our own here right at Holy Cross. Uh, how about a great hand as we ask her to come out, Rhiannon Hurst. <laughs> and they will do something of their choice together.
Rhiannon Hurst, right there, and Marshall Wood. Uh, as I mentioned, jazz music was very prominent from the early 1920s to the 1970s. It's still very important to this day, but it tends to be kind of a, as I said, a kind of a boutique art form. Uh, but there are four or five revolutionary historical figures in the jazz world, people that made jazz uh, what it is and, ma and made it evolve from one era to another in jazz history. Uh, there are about five very famous people, some of whom I hope you've heard of. Louis Armstrong is one of them, very famous, the first great jazz soloist. And Duke Ellington, one of the first great jazz composers. And then the other couple, the other few were uh, Miles Davis and John Coltrane people and Charlie Parker, people like that. We're going to do now a, a piece of music by Duke Ellington, as I just mentioned, one of the great composers. And we are going to do one of his most famous songs. Duke Ellington was a pianist. He led his own band for about 50 years or more. Um, he was a revolutionary arranger. He was one of the first... Uh, jazz musicians to appreciate the fact that Africa had a lot to do with this music. He used to write music very specifically um, around the African uh, experience. And in addition to that, it, he wrote some classic standard tunes that everyone performed. We're going to do one of his most famous jazz tunes right now. It's a song called Satin Doll. Uh, it is probably the first on any request list of any of her of uh, Duke Ellington's music. Um, and that means that if you're people of my age or any of these guys' ages, you've played this song a thousand times. And I don't know about you, but if no matter how much you love a good food, you eat it a thousand times in a row, and you sometimes get sick of it. So. We have all gotten very sick of the song we're about to play. <laughs> Just to let you know. Uh, the name of it is Satin Doll. It's world-renowned song, and we have all become very sick of it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> no? So what we're trying, what we're gonna do, f just for our own uh, benefit, Satin Doll is a jazz tune, it's a swing tune. But in order to make it slightly more interesting to us, we're going to do it in a way that it is not usually performed. We're going to do it, half of it in 3-4 time, that's like a waltz, and half of it in 4-4 time. So the first half we're going to do in 3-4, and the middle part we'll do in 4-4, four, four, and then we'll do the last part in 3-4, and then we will improvise, because that's what we do as jazz players, we'll make up our own stuff but always with these two different time fields. You'll hear it right away, even if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say 3-4 time or 4-4 four, four time. You'll notice the difference as soon as you hear Satin Doll by Duke Ellington, one of the loveliest songs ever written. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, we have featured a number of us during this concert so far. Uh, you heard John Wilkins on guitar during that first, one of the first things we did, of course, Marshall, and of course, I'm all over this concert. Um, because my name is on the biggest poster I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> um, but now we're going to feature a wonderful pianist, Ben Cook. Ben is, uh, he's been with us, he's done this concert many, many years, but he is very renowned in so many different aspects of his professional career. Most importantly, probably, or most prominently, he is the pianist with the Boston Pops Orchestra, and he has played and recorded with uh, John Williams many times. He's one of John Williams' favorite pianists. And he's going to feature a song of his, uh, feature himself on a song called Yours Is My Heart Alone. How about Ben Cook, ladies? <laughs>
only problem with this auditorium is that when the applause stopped, there's a serious dead silence. <laughs> so, how about one more hand for Ben Cook, Marshall, <laughs> Marty. Uh, just to continue a little bit along the lines of our little history kind of lesson. Uh, I mentioned jokingly, kiddingly, totally facetiously, something about rock and roll killing jazz music. Um, it was totally kidding and totally facetious, but I meant every word of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really didn't. But jazz did go th have its heyday, and then it was it had its swan song kind of in the 50s and 60s. And then something very odd happened in the 1960s that revitalized jazz music. It was a phase, it came from Brazil, and it was a kind of rhythm, a, a, a Brazilian rhythm called the bossa nova. And a bossa nova, either in Portuguese, I'm assuming in Portuguese or Spanish, meant new beat. And it was a new rhythm a Latin, from Latin America, which is why we call this kind of rhythm Latin, Latin music. Um, and it was a craze, and suddenly some of the top 40 tunes of the era in 1960s were, were jazz music done in a Brazilian style. And so we're going to do one of those tunes right now for you. It's a Brazilian samba called Sodanco Samba, and uh, well, you'll hear the difference. You'll hear the difference in the rhythms from the, the ry rhythms you've been hearing from us so far. Sodanco Samba, and this will feature our phenomenal drummer, as you just heard, Marty Richards.
Marty Richards, don't stop that. Marty Richards. Marty Richards. <laughs> one, two, one, two. We're going to invite uh, Rian and Hurst back out to do uh, another song with the whole band this time. So while she's walking out, how about a hand for Rian and Hurst?
Rhiannon Hurst, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to do one more tune for you. It's kind of our theme song. We, we always end with this song for the last many, many years. Uh, it's a song called Groove Merchant. But before we play it, I would like to, first of all, she, she doesn't have to come out because, uh, but if she wants to, she can. How about one more hand for Rhiannon and Hurst? In fact, there she is, Rhiannon and Hurst. And Ben Cook on piano, Marshall Wood on bass, John Wilkins on guitar, Marty Richards on drums. And we will do one more tune for you right now, and that will be it. Thank you all for coming.